going to shock you all because I love and adore this bag. Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to talk to you about the 10 luxury handbags that I would not buy again. I have split this video into two halves. So with the first half, we have five luxury handbags that I have owned or had and either sold or returned because they just weren't working for me and I will not buy them again. I won't bring them back into my collection. There's something about them that just either was annoying or didn't work or didn't fit for me and they're gone and I won't bring them back. And those are five items that I wouldn't buy again. And then the other five are five luxury handbags that I still have that I have one of, but I won't buy another one of. Now you might say, well, you only need one. You don't need to be buying lots of the same thing. But I am someone, I am a creature of habit. When I love something, as you can see, I will buy multiples. We have too many Capucines here. We have lots of Chanel Minis. We have two Chanel 19s. We have two Petite Mals. I, I am a creature of habit. When I love something, I will buy multiples or duplicates in different colours, different fabrics, different textures, because I stick to what I love. So the second five are bags that I have one of, but for some reason, there's something about them that I wouldn't buy a second one. I wouldn't buy another one. And hopefully this video, if you're thinking or considering any of these bags, this can give you a little bit more insight into them, why they didn't work for me or what particularly it is that I don't really love about them, that I either sent them or sold them and wouldn't buy them again or wouldn't buy another one. It'll give you a bit more information if you're making this decision on what to spend your money on. So let's start with the five that I have had and sold or returned and wouldn't bring back, wouldn't buy again. And number one is the Louis Vuitton Vanity PM. This is a bag that I was excited to get. I ordered from Louis Vuitton and it's the only bag that I've ever ordered and returned. Generally, when I make the decision to buy something, I will know enough about it that I it's going to work and I'm going to love it. But I ordered the Vanity PM thinking that I would love this bag because I really love the Nice collection, which is the Nano here and I have the Mini over there. And I thought, yes, a bag version of this. I'm going to love this. I thought the chain was beautiful. I, I just liked the aesthetic of it. And when I got it, oh, I really did, did not work. It did not work. I was so disappointed whenever I opened it and unboxed it. One of the things I liked about the bag was I really liked the chain. I thought the chain was really decorative and looked really, really well, but it's just for me too short to sit cross body. The niece, as you, it's the same shape as the niece, so it's quite boxy, but it's a bag version. So it sat out quite a bit, but at a shorter length and it was just too short for me. I didn't want to buy another chain whenever the cost of the Vanity PM is quite a lot of money. So I didn't want to buy another chain to wear it. I didn't want to have to buy another strap to wear it. I liked that the chain came with it. I wanted to wear that chain, but it was just too short. I just, it didn't sit right. I didn't like it. And then when the opening of it, it's two zips that come around it like this. And it's quite awkward and it's quite fiddly. And you have to be either holding it and opening it or using two hands to put around it together to get the zip the zip clasped open and close and I found that really cumbersome and when I was even just trying it on getting in and out of it it quite annoyed me and just the chain length together with the two zips I just thought no this for the amount of money there are so many other bags that I would love more than this that I just couldn't justify keeping it it was quite a sought after bag at the time but for me it just didn't work it just wasn't right and I returned it and absolutely I would not buy that bag again it's never come back into my mind I've never thought about buying it again I've never thought about adding it again and that's whenever I know I did the right thing in returning it because I think I would have been keeping it just to have it and that's completely the wrong reason to keep bags at this amount of money. Second bag that I had and did love for a while but have sold and would not buy another one of is the Chanel boy bag. The Chanel Boy was actually the first Chanel bag that I have ever bought. I had a dark grey version with burgundy braiding around the side. It had a top handle. It was from the Paris Salzburg collection. It was a limited edition. And when I got that bag, oh, I loved it. I loved it. I remember buying it in London with my husband carrying the carrier bag. I was so excited to have it. I just loved it. I thought I'm going to use this bag to bits. I'm going to adore it. It's going to be wonderful. And then I brought it home and I hardly ever used it. Hardly ever used it. And I didn't have any more Chanel bags at the time. It wasn't that I had the Chanel minis that I was reaching for instead of the boy. It was the only Chanel bag I had. And at the time I didn't have very many other Louis Vuitton bags either. So it wasn't that there was this size of a collection that it maybe could just be overlooked or maybe not my favorite. 
it was up one of few and I still didn't use it when I sold that bag it was in pristine condition because it was my first and I was sentimentally attached to it as I get I didn't really want to sell it but then someone was looking for it and had a connection to that collection and I thought right this could go to a better home and you could buy something that you're going to love much more and I think having it made me realise the boy bag just isn't for me and I have seen other versions of the boy bag come out especially in Chevron they have some really beautiful colours come out and I've thought oh I really like that and I nearly convinced myself to try the small size I had the, the old medium size but there's just I know that I would be buying it because one I like the colour and I think the small size is quite cute but I actually don't really like the boy bag and I think what I don't like about it on me is it's quite boxy. So I wear my bags a lot crossbody and when I wore that crossbody it's a rectangle, it's almost like a brick shape and it's quite a boxy shape sitting on your crossbody and it just meant that I reached for that bag very very infrequently. I didn't really look to use it. Now my cousin and one of my best friends, it's both of their favourite bags that I've ever owned and they both were very insistent that I should not sell that bag but it's too much money to have sitting on the shelf especially when somebody really really wanted it. It just wasn't getting worn. I think I had worn it maybe four or five times in the whole time I'd owned it and I think using it that infrequently when I had so little bags just shows me the boy bag doesn't work for me and that's a bag that I wouldn't bag again. I also found that my hair got caught. There's a leather strap with two knots I suppose at the end of it that join the chain. My hair would get caught around the attachments to it quite a lot and then the chain would spin round quite a lot and that annoyed me as well and it just really didn't work for me. Number three is a bag that I loved for the longest time while I had it and it's the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse. I actually personally really really like the aesthetic of the satchel bag. I really like the satchel. It appeals to the inner nerd and geek in me. I was always one of those people that loved getting their school stuff going back to school so I really loved the satchel. The opening of it has been described as being fussy but it didn't bother me. I was happy enough opening and closing it. I never had overly a problem with it. It really that didn't bother me. I loved how it sat even though it's a bigger bag in my collection it's flat enough that it sat flat enough to the body. I normally wore it cross body or carried it. Really really enjoyed it but I had it in the canvas version and the gusset on the right hand side cracked. Louis Vuitton have had a number of problems with the pochette Matisse. There's quite a bit of cracking in them or glazing issues and when I when it cracked I'd had it for a couple of years I'd worn it quite a lot I'd used it quite a lot I'd really enjoyed it then when the gusset cracked I just thought I don't want to risk this again I don't want to for this I don't want to risk that it happens again and maybe the second time I wouldn't have such a seamless replacement they were great in Louis Vuitton they did look at it and said yes that's faulty and they replaced it without issue and I used the funds for that to buy my Louis Vuitton Volt necklace but it's a bag I think I've had my time with and I enjoyed while I had but I don't want to risk the defect again and for that reason I wouldn't buy it again. Number four, oh my goodness, is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25. I had this in the Empreinte leather version in a colour very similar to the pink mini capucines over there and I loved that bag. Then I fell out of love with it and I sold it and I've talked about it recently that it's one of my biggest regrets selling that bag. I sold it for a ridiculously low amount of money and I would have much rather kept it in my collection and used it on the odd occasion that I would have used it. That being said, I won't buy it again. I wish I'd kept the one I had but for the price of them, for the use that I would get out of it, it's quite big and boxy. Again, on me crossbody just looked a bit too big. I didn't at, towards the end use it very much. I didn't look to use it very much. I prefer smaller neater bags when they're sitting crossbody. Even though I regret selling that one, I won't buy another one. The opening of it can be quite tight. Just as a crossbody bag, for me personally, it wasn't great the way it sat. It sat out a little bit much. I just didn't love it. And I do still regret selling the one I had, but I don't miss it enough or I didn't love it enough to rebuy it at today's prices and I won't buy another Speedy 25. I don't think, to be honest with you, I will buy another Speedy. That being a bigger size or the Nano. I did have the Nano and I sold it and I don't think I will buy another Nano either. They do bring them out in some lovely leathers now. There was a really nice version in the Stardust collection and I also liked the black and pink and white multicolour version. But I don't know if I would love another one to buy it again. The Speedy for me I just don't think 
is a bag that I need to own. I love the classicness of it and how it's a classic Louis Vuitton bag, but for me, I just don't think I need to have one in my collection. Number five of the bags that I've owned and sold and won't buy again is the Louis Vuitton Twist in the MM size. Now, I currently have two of the Twist in the PM size, which is the smaller size, and that works much better for me. It's neater. The MM size is a more substantial size. Now, it's not huge. Let's, let's be... Let's be real, it's not huge, but I like very small bags. The MM is just a bit more of a proper sized handbag, if we're honest. You can fit a long wallet in it. You can fit a bit more in it. I loved that bag while I had it. I used to wear it quite a lot. I would have worn it in the winter quite a lot over winter coats and it was a good enough size that I could carry what I need in it. I could put more probably than I needed in it. But then I stopped using it and I stopped using it whenever I got some other alternatives like the Chanel Gabrielle or the Classic Flap which I have ext extended or the Chanel 19 and I generally reached for them more than I did the Louis Vuitton Twist. The Louis Vuitton Twist can get heavy and in the MM size it was just a bit too big for me whenever I wore it. I caught sight of a couple of photographs where it sat out quite a bit and it made me realise that it might be a bit too boxy for me, sat out a bit too much and it did get quite heavy whenever I put stuff in it and it would have pulled on my shoulder. So the MM size and the twist, although I still love the twist bag and have two in the PM size, I won't rebuy a twist in the MM size. Now, moving on to bags that I still have and I have one of, but for some reason, there's something about them that I won't buy a second one. And let's start with the one that I think is going to shock you all because I love and adore this bag and it's the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. I, I know I can hear it. I can hear the reaction. I have the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the GM and I actually have two of them, but I don't count it as having two. The one that I have, the first one is my old one that's over 10 years old. It's very well worn and I replaced that with an identical one to use for the same reason. So that's still almost like one bag but I only need one of those. I use that bag for work. I use that bag as a workhorse. My laptop goes in it, all my papers goes in it, my agenda goes in it, everything goes in it that comes to work with me. I use that when we travel. I use it if we're going on holiday. Wherever we're going that's carrying a lot, I use the Neverfill, but I don't need another one. I love the Louis Vuitton monogram. Monogram is my favorite canvas. The Neverfill does come in the Demir Azure and the Damier Abin. I don't love either of those canvases enough to need to have another one to swap out of. Swapping out of bags I find a bit frustrating at times, especially the Neverfill for me which is everything in it. It would be like unpacking the house and moving it into another house. There is so much in it that I just, I know I wouldn't be bothered changing it and I, the Neverfill in the monogram is my favourite so I wouldn't buy another one. I wouldn't buy a PM or an MM. The GM works for me, the big size because it's the carry everything to work. I don't actually love it as much in the smaller sizes and I don't need to have it in any of other canvases because the MM or the GM sorry in the monogram is the only one I need and I won't buy another one of those. I won't have a collection of them. I won't have different ones to swap in and out of. One's enough. The next bag that I won't buy another one of is the Chanel Gabrielle. Oh, this is one that really has a love-hate with me. I, I love this bag and I love this big gaudy tacky strap on it. That's right up my street. I love all the chains on this bag. I love how effortless it is whenever this bag is worn. You can just fling it across you. You can wear it in so many ways. I actually saw a girl in the town very recently with a black one and it made me realise why do I not use this more because it was so cool and I loved how she was wearing it. I love it but it gets quite heavy, especially because I keep this on. Now, I could take this off it and I would solve part of my own problem because it wouldn't be as heavy without this strap. But there's a lot of chains in this. And whenever you're wearing this, especially with the strap, it can get quite heavy. I also think that I reach for the minis more than this for some reason. I just like the aesthetic of the, of the mini. Every time I put this on though, I'm reminded of how much I like this and I wondered at myself as to why I don't use it more. But I know that one of these for me is enough and I know that I don't use this enough with the heaviness of it and the aesthetic of it as opposed to the minis to buy another one. When we were in Paris, there is a bright orange Chanel bag which I missed. It was the 20C collection, I think. I absolutely loved the colour of it. It came in the Gabrielle and they still had it in the Gabrielle in Paris when we were there. Even though I loved the colour of that bag, I didn't buy it in the Gabrielle. I was tempted, but I knew that I don't use the Gabrielle enough to buy another one. And I know there's enough about it that annoys me not to buy another one. Oh, hello. Daddy. 
Sally needs me. Okay, I'll come now. Another one that I won't buy another one of is the bucket bag. Now, I knew a lot of you are waiting on this one coming. And a lot of people I think are waiting on me coming on here and telling you that I've sold this or advertising it for sale because it features so often in my least used bags and I don't know why. I love the aesthetic of it. I love the chain as like a jewelry piece. I think it's a stunning, stunning bag, but for some reason, the bucket bag is just one of the bags that I use least. I used to have the Fendi Montresor, which is a smaller bucket bag, and I used it once, I think, the whole time I had it. The bucket bag for me is just a style that I don't really use. I love this one. Like I don't think I could think of another bucket bag aesthetically that I would like more, but even as much as I love the look of this one, I still don't use it that much. Now, I'm committed to try and use it to more because I really don't want to sell this because I love the look of this bag. But I know if I struggle to use this one enough, I there wouldn't be not enough of a use for a second one and I will not buy another bucket bag. The fourth bag that I won't buy a second one of and it's going to shock everybody because I love and adore the Louis Vuitton Capucines. I think these bags are exquisite. I think they are pieces of art. I think the workmanship in them, the leather is fabulous. I love the look of them. You can see that I have two of the minis over there. I just think the BB for me is... It's a bigger size, obviously. It's not a bag I'm going to take out in the evening, whereas these I generally take out in the evening more. This one is more of a larger daytime bag, but it's a handheld bag. It's a more elegant bag. I am at a stage in my life where I have two young children, one is six and one is three, so you don't have that many opportunity on a daytime to be taking a bag that is... One's over here just behind us and is talking to everybody. But it's a daytime bag for me. And with them, I don't have the opportunity during the day to take these out that often. I don't need that many elegant, bigger bags because my lifestyle just doesn't afford that many opportunities to use them. And as much as I love the Capucines, there was recently one in Dublin that was in the BB size and the colour was made for me. Anita was shocked that I didn't buy that bag because it was, if you've seen a picture of it, it was right up my street. But in the BB size, I know that I just don't need another one of these. I do use this one when I get the opportunity to take a bag that's elegant or a bit bigger and hand carry it. I do use this but I just don't have that option that often to need another one. And these are so expensive. In the recent increase for Louis Vuitton, these went up again. They are so much money that I just know that if I had another one in the BB size, they really wouldn't get used all that often. And I won't buy another one in this size, despite how much I love them. I love the mini and I wouldn't rule out another mini, although even they in the recent price increase went up to a very, very high amount. So it would have to be a very special bag for me to buy another one of those because they're now so, so, so much money. And the last bag that I still own and love and would not buy another one. And I'm going to hear Connor and Dale shouting from the sidelines. It is the Chanel Trendy in the CC. And the reason for this is very similar to that of the Capucines in the BB size. This again is a bag for me that is worn on a certain occasion. Now, I've worn this with my very bright and funky Gucci cardigan and a pair of trainers and a pair of jeans. It's not matching it. It's not that I can't put it with a more casual wardrobe, but it's the occasion that I'm taking it with. Even though this has a crossbody strap, it's still quite a big bag to sit crossbody. So if I'm going out anywhere and we're going as a family or the children are there, this just isn't practical. So it's a bag that gets a lot less use because it needs to be at a time when I can carry it or a time where I'm not going to crawl up out of park or I'm not going to a soft play or we're going somewhere that I know that I can put this somewhere or I can hold it whenever we're there. We did take it out very recently. I was going for dinner and there was my children was there and we were going with my in-laws, but I knew that we were going to the restaurant and I knew that the children were going to be fine. It wasn't a bag that I was having to go and do a lot of activity with them with. So this is a bag that although I love the shape of it, in my lifestyle with the children, there's just not a huge opportunity to use this that often. And I think you do need to think about when you're buying bags, if they will fit into your lifestyle. I have fallen guilty before, <clears throat> look around us, of buying bags because I love them and I love the look of them, but they just don't really fit into my lifestyle and it means that they don't get used that often. And this is one of those, this is a perfect example of that. It's just a bag that with the lifestyle we live with the dogs and the children, I just don't have that many opportunities to use this. I have a few bags that are like this, so it means that I'm rotating those in the limited opportunities there are, and it just would not make sense for me to buy another one of these, even though I've seen one in Chevron, which I love, and I've seen colors in these, which I love, but I know I just won't have the opportunity to use them that much to justify this price point. And hello you. 
So those are the 10 bags that I will not buy again. Five of them that I've had and sold or returned and definitely won't come back. The second five being bags that I still own and I'm happy to own and love and enjoy, but one of them, there's for some reason about them, one is enough. There is something about them that I can't justify having a second one, some reason, some design flaw, something about them that just doesn't work for me to have multiples of. And those second five are five that are low out, that are staying, that are not going anywhere. I'm not gonna buy a second one of and I wouldn't buy again as a duplicate. I hope this has been helpful. I hope if you are considering any of these bags, this has given you a bit more of an insight into them, especially with the first five that went and wouldn't come back. And then these second five that there's just something about that I couldn't have another one for. I hope if you're looking at them, this has been really, really helpful and given you a bit more information about these bags, a bit more what it's actually like to use them, especially if your lifestyle is anything sim similar Thank to mine. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching me. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.